Hello there, and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga Show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 302. I'm hoping it's 302, somewhere around the three mark. I didn't do much of a celebration for the whole 300 episode thing. <clears throat> kind of let that one go by without as much as a hip hip hooray. Um, not really one for celebrations, not really one for acknowledging days or acknowledging milestones and things, you know. I think that's a little bit G-A-Y. I try and just carry on and just keep one foot in front of the other. So if you're watching this or listening and thinking, why haven't I heard this past 300 already? Because I didn't mention it. And now I am mentioning it, I'm making it to a thing. But hey, what can you do? Hope you're good wherever you are. Hope you are hanging on in there during a lockdown period. And um, yeah. What else can we do in it? We just gotta hang on in there really until we get given a green light to resume life as normal. But I'm hoping this is my um optimistic side of me, or you know, I'm I'm quite optimistic anyway about this whole thing anyway. I'm I'm very much glass half full, hoping that once the green light does get turned on, everyone sort of like changes their way of doing things somewhat ever so slightly, a little bit, maybe just think about things more, maybe um approach things in a different way. Maybe go into it with uh, an open mind. Maybe have uh, pure intentions and the things that they're doing. You know, all these little tiny buzzwordy type things. But um, at the heart of it, there is some real good stuff there that people can get stuck into, you know. Whether it's not being so, uh, what do you call it, finicky when it comes to, you know, little things. Like when you when you reserve a, a table at a restaurant, but then you don't end up going because your friends are flaky. And instead of calling up and telling them that you're not going to turn up, you just ignore it and go to the restaurant. Then they call you two or three times later trying to find out where you are and you just completely ghost them and carry on doing what you're doing. Now, little do you know on their side, they've had to probably, you know, if you're usually if you're like a party of six or maybe a party of four plus, they might have to call in a couple more people, maybe ask for some favors or some friends to come in and help them out um, under the premise that, you know, they're going to make a little bit extra money because, you know, if the average one, per, if one person on average drinks five drinks, you times that by five or six or seven suddenly you've got loads of orders and you've got the potential of maybe having a couple tips so that little action that you do from ghosting a restaurant can lead to some quite catastrophic events further down the line for the restaurant right they might get a bit more tight in terms of how people reserve tables that might lead to people getting a bit put off by it eventually this place closed and then suddenly you're wondering where your comfort food um little spot was that you used to go to stoke new because you decided not to call them up when you didn't have a table booked. I know, a bit of a stretch, but hopefully people will be a bit more um, considerate um, going forward. But um, yeah, I've been pretty good. Hanging on in there, all right. Uh, as I said before, I'm feeling quite guilty about mentioning how well I've been coping with the whole thing. I think it's been pretty enjoyable. It's been an opportunity to you know do the things I love doing anyway. Um, reading articles, being on the internet all day reading books watching movies standard things i like to do is have been able to do that i guess the only thing that i'm lacking right now is maybe the idea of um, not the idea but um, action when it comes to actually creating things so i'm writing on my blog quite often i'm doing that every day i'm making a mix every day or every weekend for the most part i'm recording podcasts at least three times a week so these are things i'm creating but i need a little bit more i need to ramp up more when it comes to maybe doing some artwork designing some flyers with the mixes i do all those little tiny things can really help um to propel things in another direction but hopefully this week i will end up doing that um i've actually got some running shoes coming too <clears throat> that i ordered i've got these um hookah hook, 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 one, one. let me see if i can get them image up here on the website to show you but i've got these coming and i'm excited to get them because um the shoes that i currently have at the moment are pretty much on their last legs so i decided to go for these maximalist shoes which probably goes against everything i know when it comes to uh you know um when it comes to wearing sneakers like this i'm usually one that tends to go for the whole like you know minimalist shoe because i like to do pose running and make sure i'm running on my toes but this time around i decided to go for the hokey hoka one ones which are these super thick midsole uh, running shoes that essentially can work as a daily trainer and something you can wear during race day but i would imagine for the most part 
most um, serious runners or people that want to make sure they're not hill striking will probably wear these during their long runs when during a week and then when it comes to race day you try and have as less a fin as a shoe as possible of course so you're not carrying around, mu around much weight and also so you can just like run really quickly but i guess the on the flip side of it if you get one of those like carbon plated shoes that people are doing now like the vapor the nike vapor fly four percent that has that little rocker at the front where i think the idea behind it is that when you stomp your foot and you kind of go off it sort of springs and pushes you forward which is why people are getting ridiculously good pvs when it comes to um or pr sorry when it comes to uh braces that they're doing at the moment so i decided to go for this one i've got the black and the yellow ones that are on their way um hopefully i'll get those very very soon i'll update you guys on what i think of them but so far i needed a new pair to kind of go into my rotation um i think again during, during this whole lockdown you know i'm trying to um take a re look rejig things in terms of my training in terms of how i approach things be a bit more serious be a bit more uh, have a bit more intent behind the things i do and one of them is to make sure that i have all the gear i have all the equipment i need in order to kind of make sure that i'm no i'm never at a loss to run because before in the past i'd have like you know maybe two or three pieces of kit that i could wear which meant if i wore them during a the week um to their max i wouldn't necessarily have anything to wear during the end of the week so that would impact that so in order to do that in order to kind of make sure that mistake doesn't happen again make sure you have a good rotation of gear to wear make sure you have the appropriate footwear too for different kind of uh you know scenarios whether i go on holiday i'll do a trail run i might have to get a different pair of shoes or definitely a bit different pair um because i'm sure that e that eva so will um get worn down once i go on the trail run but have different sort of race shoes have something maybe to do you know maybe long distance slow maybe long distance fast you know these kind of things you need to kind of have in your arsenal and i think um this will go a long way to making sure that i have all the requisite things needed but yeah these should be coming very very soon so again i'll double i'll definitely update you guys once i have them but i'm happy that it's got a pull tab because i don't think a lot of hockey hooker on it on it have those this is a rincon has got a peel tab on it nice fix so decent length on the tongue i would prefer the tongue to be a bit longer i quite like the satisfaction of pulling that bad boy up a bit more but you know um what can you do they are the way they are and hopefully they fit got uk 10 and a half coming in so i need that extra bit of room just in case because <coughs> usually my shoes i usually go, go for a uk 10 but i take out the intel so i can just you know <coughs> wear them as close to the ground as possible but with these being so thick there's no real point of doing that so that should be arriving very very soon what is happening um updates oh playboy cart he has finally um updated us and let us know that he's dropping a new album so that should be coming very very soon we have an update based on his instagram he decides to upload the picture i'm assuming it's the album cover we haven't really got um details of it he just you know as he does he tends to usually let his work do the talking so not many details have kind of come out there but this is what he posted on his instagram the other day i think just yesterday actually um it's a cover it looks like it might be the album it's him sort of you know on the floor uh on his knees um silhouette of his so i'm assuming this is going to be a whole lot of red um it could be a single we're not really sure what the deal is here but um after waiting nearly three years it seems like from since uh what not self-titled since dialit dropped is it three years i think when did dialit release uh dialit release date let's see the yeah so it's bloody hell 2018 yeah so it's nearly three years now since he dropped that um so looking forward to seeing that <coughs> when that comes out hopefully very very soon <coughs> again loads of um, leaks have come out i'm sure most people have heard a few tracks that are going to appear on the album but i've tend to do away with leaks i'm not really a big fan of listening to them usually they're low quality usually it's just people you know usually mostly it's kids who are just looping a snippet to make it sound like a track when it's not really or it's something that's been recorded off of someone's iphone or it's just a reference they're not it's never close to the actual fully realized product unless you're ripping it directly from his performance which might be some you know um, avenue to go down but <clears throat> considering what i read during a weekend interview the other day weekend mentioned that i think i forgot what song it was but it was a song that he performed live that essentially ended up getting leaked and end up being one of his biggest singles but he ended up making 67 different versions of that one single um because he was trying to recapture or um what do you call it he was trying to replicate the magic that happened from the snippet which i think might have been an impromptu sort of like thing that he did in a live performance or it was something that he was unable to capture from the actual snippet 
because I think he mentioned something along the lines of um, there's like a girl screaming in a snippet and he was unable to kind of get that and you know remake that into his actual bit so there's loads of different things that happen there that sometimes can affect the what can affect the likelihood of you getting a snippet on the album because you know an artist might think that you know once a leak is out they they owe it to their fans to do something new or they get annoyed that they had that song's already out and the element of surprise is gone because that's part of the allure when it comes to albums and it and again i'm just happy that he hasn't released a single i'm i'm i've never really been a fan of the whole like artist putting out singles thing. there's some people that need to do it i'm pretty sure you know if you're maybe a younger artist or smaller artist coming up no less lesser known let's say not younger or smaller but let's say lesser known artist coming up maybe leaks will kind of help you or little snippets or little singles or guest features maybe i'd do if i was an artist i might do a few guest features jump on people's tracks coming up and just do that thing uh, or or do like the sort of Travis Scott thing where when you do a feature you ask for someone to send you the stem so that you can fuck up and tweak the bit that you're going to be on so it sounds like a stamp you know it's sort of stamped with your sort of thing because you know when Travis Scott's going to rap you can really sense it the first two or three bars before he starts on his verse right because he tweaks you know tweaks the verb he tweaks the bass maybe removes a hi-hat some distortion there that underwater sound like loads of really cool things happen there um, but yeah hopefully we see the album dropping I'm assuming Thursday, Friday, when albums usually do drop, so um, the fingers crossed we get that. Fingers crossed it's not a single, and I'm interested to see where he goes in terms of sound. Um, how far can he push it? Because I thought Dialit, in my opinion, you know, from track one to to ten or whatever it was, was maybe one of his most concise and uh, well put together projects that you might have seen from like a hashtag mumble rapper in it. Um, what was it? Yeah, one to nineteen, and it was basically pretty perfect and. I think there's rumors out there that supposedly there's going to be a deluxe of this as well. So we're going to get the edition of this. Well, we probably we we'll probably will get. I was. I'm going to assume we'll get maybe 15 tracks, 12 to 15, and then the rest will be deluxe. So it'll be another 19. I can't imagine Playboy Carti wanting to put out 20 tracks plus a deluxe. He doesn't. Te- he doesn't seem like that kind of person. I likes to um, give his fans too much music, right? He likes to give them enough but not too much. So like you know, so you have that sense of longing, you know, that you want to wait for some of the stuff to come out. So that should be cool. Um, but yeah, let's hopefully see that coming out. Yeah, I'm not assuming. I'm looking at it now from Dialect. Dialect was 19 tracks, so I can assume. Yeah, I'll say 12 to 15. We're gonna get on a whole lot of red, which I'm assuming is still the title. I don't know if it's changed the title of it, but obviously it's a whole lot of red. Um, because he said that on a few tracks. Maybe it's just like a reference. Maybe it's a it's a, like a a point of view, a methodology, a way of thinking. I don't know, but let's hope we get that very very soon. Um, it would be good if we get that soon as well because it, it would help to make these days a little bit more different than what they are in it these groundhog days that we're having at the moment so hopefully we have an update on that soon and then what else was on the list i saw um i think that might be in terms of random news <clears throat> let's just jump on into it straight into the topics have a few things here to talk about number one primarily i'm sure some of you have probably seen it there's been a really cool interview with kanye on um gq where he essentially talks about his plans for Yeezy, his plans for architecture and buildings, some stuff about new music, and just generally a little bit more clarity when it comes to his uh, political affiliations. And so far, um, judging by what I've read, um, because I gave it one quick read before I headed out for my run, he sounded pretty clear-minded. He sounded um, quite centred. He sounded like he finally arrived at a stage where um, that most creatives want to should be aspiring to at, at arrive to um it's the stage where you suddenly got a few money right where essentially you've amassed so much wealth through your creative endeavors that no one um you're kind of um you know you're kind of the leader of your own ship you don't really need to answer to anybody which essentially is the the zenith that is the resting place that is the heaven that is the uh, utopia for most creatives right to get to a place where you don't you'd never need to accept notes or recommendations or advice from anybody ever again um because mostly you know there there are there are some occasions where some insight some info um some pointers can lead you in the right direction but for the most part if you're a creative of the truest sense of the word you probably can do it on your own 
right in terms of the idea itself maybe fleshing it out and getting it you know ready to ship and having it in people's hands you might need more people but in terms of actually sparking the initial idea you're the one that still should drives it forward you're the one that comes out with something in ingenuity in, in um in due it what's that word called ingenious right you come up with that ingenious idea you're the one that breaks the boundaries you're the one that's pushing the limits and then essentially you're trying to navigate the real world and trying to make it work but the i did the advice from random strangers doesn't necessarily add anything to it and um it got me thinking about the fu money thing because i remember it was a clip from a movie isn't it right because i remember hearing about that term first maybe through joe rogan podcast right but um, I think it was from a movie clip. Let's see if I can find it now. I think it's called F.U. Money. Da, da, da. I think it's a clip from a movie. See if I can find it. There we go. It's from... Where's it from? It's from The Gambler. John Goodman says that his character. So let's probably put this up here and I'll just play it. Actually, I'll play the audio because I don't want to get yanked off of YouTube for this. You get up two and a half million dollars, any asshole in the world knows what to do. You get a house with a 25-year roof, an indestructible Jap economy shitbox. You put the rest into the system at three to five percent to pay your taxes, and that's your base, get me? That's your fortress of fucking solitude. That puts you for the rest of your life at a level of fuck you. Somebody wants you to do something, fuck you. Boss pisses you off, fuck you. <laughs> Own your house, have a couple bucks in the bank, don't drink. That's all I have to say to anybody at any social level. Did your grandfather take risks? Yes. I guarantee he did it from a position of fuck you. A wise man's life is based around fuck you. The United States of America is based on fuck you. You're a king. You have an army. Greatest navy in the history of the world. Fuck you. Blow me. We'll fuck it up ourselves. Which we have done. Beautiful fuck you position lost forever. So um, that basically encompasses everything that I thought regarding the Kanye interview. But again, it's a really enlightening one. I'll quickly read through some bits and pieces of here. Um, it says here, inside Kanye West's vision for the future. Um, first, he changed the sound of pop music. Then he revolutionized fashion and sneakers. Now Kanye West is redesigning the very building blocks of the family life, food, clothing, and shelter. And he's claimed thousands of acres of Wyoming as a test site for his ideas. We followed West from Cody to Calabasas and from Cabo San Lucas to Paris to see it all firsthand and to talk to him about his next album, his altered ego and his renewed faith in God. So again, and I think you got a lot from this too because Will Welch, um, I'm assuming he's one of the um, editors-in-chief at GQ, is a good friend of Kanye's. He's known him since 2003. So there's a little bit more, um, it's less combative this sort of interview there is a little bit more kinship there he does come at it from a friend point of view that also happens to be a journalist which always helps these kind of um, exposés with people that are a bit volatile um it tends to help when you have somebody that they actually respect or that they have a, a relationship with so that, i thought that was pretty cool and you have an awesome image of him in front of one of his um what you might call it um off-road vehicles they use at his ranch so some really cool pictures here but let me quickly get to the bits that i thought was cool uh <clears throat> Or is it the, 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 the bits are really cool are these little sections here just ahead of the interview so i think he interviews him in four different locations right interview one two and three and he kind of before each bit he kind of describes the setting or what happened prior what happened just before the interview took place and it gives you a real idea about you know number one how rich they are as a family and number two just how far um kind of sort of influence and reach in terms of you know creative endeavors in terms of stuff that he's doing for the site in terms of his ideas how far they could actually go but there's some real cool bits that i liked here that i want to get into actually let me go on my profile because i've got some sections here that i highlighted for you guys to quickly check out where is it there we go so it's a tweet that i put out i put out some actual snippets that for all of interest number one so the obviously the one thing that i think a lot of people are going to be interested in when it comes to talking about kanye is his trump endorsement i've not really that bothered about it um i'm over it have been over it for a while i think in the moment it was a little bit the reaction to it was a bit ott anyway i understand at the time that had represented a lot for americans especially people that are from marginalized groups 
blah de blah de blah but essentially he decided to kind of you know uh poke his head from underneath the parapet sort of stick his hand up and publicly state that he was a supporter of you know the now donald trump but i think for the most part if you are looking at the polling numbers you're looking at who he actually elected him where he was where he won seats it you'd be you know it'll be a fair guess to assume that there's quite a lot of people out there celebrities included who are also fans of trump but in terms of projecting their career in terms of making sure they don't lose their agents and they don't lose their bookers and don't lose their gigs they just keep it to themselves but of course kind of this is not going to do that but i like to kind of um explanation about it here in this little screenshot that i took so the question is here on here it says um, what is the responsibility of celebrities who are able to move culture there is this idea that you have no account you have to be accountable to people other than just yourself right so which is true because i think in one sense if you're kanye part of the reason why you affect part of the reason part of what gives you satisfaction is your ability to sell loads of sell your ideas right you can kind of package these weird shoes at the easy 350s right or the wave runners or the 700 sorry or the boots or the slides and you're able to present it to the general populace and then they're able to say yay or nay or you're able to present it to the populace they're able to say yay and then the other brands have to play catch up right so you're affecting culture in that way which is great right good for your bank balance good for your kids good for your ego or good for your legacy whatever it may be but then the other flip side too you have to also accept that if you are going against the grain which is the common you know maybe the the, the collective narrative of orange man bad you also have to you have to accept the kind of criticism that comes your way and i think that was what he kind of flopped at i think when he came out so strongly uh back in trump hugging him wearing a hat saying he was his dad and all that sort of shit he was coming at it from a competitive point of view he was trying to fight fire with fire and i think what he should have done was just explain his point of view explain why he decided to kind of put his hand up and support him even if people didn't agree, they would have they would have to respect his decision making. But I think it was the fact that he didn't really come at it from any kind of point of there was no depth to his kind of thinking behind it. There was no um it didn't seem like he knew anything about his policies. It didn't seem like he'd actually worked through the idea of why he wanted to support him, but just the fact that he you kinda of got the feeling that he wanted to support him just because it wound people up. Which is, you know, which is fair enough. If you want to be an antagonist, it's cool. But you know, he's in his forties, isn't it? To be a to be an antagonist when it comes to politics in your 40s it's a little bit cringe right it's probably why people would um kind of uh cringe at the sight of morrissey saying edgy things and that you're an old man and like just relax no one cares anymore um i think it's cute and it's fun and it maybe can get it maybe can stir a reaction from when you're like 18 but once you have four kids and you live in a hill somewhere no one really thinks you're being counterculture by doing that but you know again he's his progress is to do that but anyway his answer what is the responsibility of celebrities who are able to move culture there is this idea that you have to be accountable to people other than yourself and he says yeah usually you're accountable to people that are in control of your check and you're accountable for whatever they deem you to be the face of for the people that they are controlling through you so that's what celebrity in america truly means celebrities are scared celebrities don't have the real voice but i don't want to disorganize your celebrities i don't want to be sending shots at celebrities because i am one and i know a lot of them which is a really good point to make like part of the reason why you get these sanitized versions of celebs you get you know gal gadot doing imagine you get all these cringy unself-aware lacking in self-awareness um self-entitled self-centered just d detached from reality celebrities is because for the most part they're, they're not they're not encouraged to engage with reality they're encouraged to kind of live in this sort of like alternate reality right this sort of parallel universe where everything kind of revolves around them right essentially each celebrity has like a team of what five people following them around right uh, maybe more the higher they go up in terms of uh popularity and then sometimes they have to purposely you know push people away if the higher they get up because they want to just remain normal but for the most part you know any adult that gets that kind of level of fame especially if you're a celebrity and you have an actual craft you're an actual you're an actor or you're a tv presenter or you're a comedian it's going to do something to your ego it's going to fuck you up a little bit right to be an adult where you're kind of being rewarded socially uh, monetarily uh um whatever it may be right through your talent it's going to affect you somewhere you're going to start feeling you're going to start feeling yourself you're going to start thinking your shit doesn't stink 
and then when it comes to finally trying to express yourself politically right because lives are at stake because this actually affects real human beings you're going to be encouraged not to say anything because all those nice trappings all those nice holidays that you have the fact that your mistress or whatever can live in this amazing apartment in the middle of soho the fact that you can gallivant around you know award shows is mostly tied to your ability to remain unproblematic to not push and to not kind of ruffle feathers to not be annoying um to not get on people's nerves to not say the wrong thing you have to it's a really weird balance that where you're trying to you're, you're, you're trying to kind of pretend to be everything but yourself some people are willing to make that sacrifice some people are willing to say look give me that deal i'll trade my personality i'll trade who i am you know for i don't know how many hours in a day that is let's say it's like 18 hours in a day i'll pretend to be this other guy just so i can make sure that i have this house i can go to these places i have this car i have this partner i have this circle of friends i can go to this place i can go to this restaurant people are willing to do that but i think most sane people aren't and which is why most sane people don't get into that kind of realm of celebrity or they kind of occupy a level of celebrity that allows you to still function as a normal human being but i think once you reach that presented that he has you suddenly talk for everybody right i'm sure somebody like a taylor swift doesn't want to be a political i'm pretty sure she doesn't want to start you know voting and being a spokesperson for this or that but it feels like she gets pushed into a corner to suddenly reveal who you're gonna back are you a, remember there was a big deal about taylor swift like what is she are you a republican are you a democrat and then she had to finally reveal i'm a democrat guys don't worry chill out i'm not one of the weird red people right and then you have to make sure you back the right person who's currently in the zeitgeist, who's currently at the flavor of the month. You have to say the right thing. You can't wear the wrong thing. You can't be speaking to the wrong person, quote unquote. It really is a golden handcuff, isn't it? That you're kind of bound to. And the, the, the average person isn't going to feel sorry for you. They're going to be like, oh, boohoo, you're complaining in your mansion. But I think the fact that he was able to say what he wanted to say about it, kind of go out there, put the hat on, wind everyone up you know um, generate loads of headlines essentially you know become the pariah of society shut him essentially isolate himself or uh what you, what's that word called write himself off from the black society it was quite a brave move uh, regardless if you feel, agree with how he did it or not i don't but i think that's what that's what he does in it that's what virgil does as well they sort of just learn in public they don't they don't do things privately they sort of put stuff out and just kind of iterate as it go along so i think what we saw first of all when he started speaking was his initial reaction his initial impression his initial kind of um kickback and reaction to people getting at him and now we're seeing somebody that's a little bit more clear-minded he sort of meditated on it a lot more he's fought it through he's spoken to a lot more people he's got more insights on the issues that are going on he's probably read a little bit more about it and now we have just kind of clear-minded pretty grounded Kanye talking about everything that was one quote the next one here let's go on mm. here's another sh and quote that i thought was interesting he says um a lot of reaction to you wearing the hat was how cool could this guy um who gave the gift of george bush doesn't care about black people now do this and he said black people are controlled by emotions through the media the media puts musicians artists celebrities and actors in a position to be the face of the race that they really don't have any power they really are just working for white people when it's said like that it's kind of obvious right we emotionally connect to someone on your car or someone of your color on tv and put this person speaking for us so let me say this i'm the founder of a four billion dollar organization one of the most google search brands in the planet and i'll not be told who i'm gonna vote on because of my color now if that speaks to you cool but i'm speaking for myself and he can't really get more succinct than that in it like he finally addressed the ti's the joe buddens and all these people that were essentially calling out his blackness which has always been a bit of a strange one i think it's different of course in america because i think they have you know however many years of slavery behind them um jim crow all these really you know disastrous things you know seeing somebody like a martin luther king again you know execute or getting assassinated um Malcolm X being assassinated like they've seen some really wild shit so I'm sure a lot of it is a lot of like P P S P T S D from these huge um larger than life um you know public figures within the black community you know being slain in front of their eyes right every time somebody within their culture gets a bit of success or tries to reach another level it seems like there's a little glass ceiling that they hit and they can't move make another move and stuff to do with police brutality so there's a lot of baggage that comes with it so i understand that 
the way people are black people are viewed in the states is different than they are here in europe but it was just it really was weird and i think it happens anyway in, in every in every in every um culture in every race there's always this weird um rush to somehow attach or you know put celebrities next to these social causes or make them political or you know make them more than what they are right it, like we're not satisfied with just having these people entertain us right or provide us with tunes or provide us with clothing or provide us with funny moments or you know just to allow us to kind of be brain dead for half an hour watching love island we we want more from these guys that, that quite clearly don't want to give us anymore right they, they've been quite honest about what they want to do and how they want to do it but somehow some way the public just keeps pushing for more and more and more and in a the moment they they kind of make a misstep we then kind of chastise them and it's probably worse within a black community right there's this idea that you have to kind of uh, follow this narrative that every black person is doing and sometimes you might not agree and, I've, and it's always been weird because i think i remember this tv series in america called them um, was it baldwin hills or something hills where they essentially did a reality tv show that was set that was focused upon this um area in la or california where it was a very affluent area that happened to be predominantly black or you know hispanic and it was kind of following these kids that lived in this 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 community where it was mostly private schools mostly everyone around them was white and they happened to be black or hispanic and the kind of difficulties about navigating um that world right where you have wealth you have um status or whatever it may be but you're still looked down upon because of the area that you the way place that you live in and i thought that was a pretty good summation about what it means to be black and rich in america or, or, or be famous you know no matter where you are at you are going to be looked down upon by others so the last thing you need is for your own community is for your own culture it's for your own people to look at you uh, in another way because you decide to go you decide to kind of veer off the collective narrative and who wants a collective narrative who wants to who, who doesn't who doesn't want to have an individual point of view you come at, you come into life with an individual personality you come into life forming your individual personality based on experiences that you go through you, you don't have collective experiences right that's probably why people were freaking out when little wayne didn't want to didn't have anything bad to say about police officers or something right like as if like every black person has had a very um which is thing called um contentious relationship with uh with law enforcement not everyone has had that it's like um it, you know it's like it reminds you it reminds you a little bit of like you know you hear people say it's a lot you can be you can you can have, you, you can be brought up in ends but it doesn't mean you're from ends right you can be from the hood but were you really putting in work not really right I, I grew up in a rough area i know people that went to prison i know people that have died through gun violence and knife violence and knife crime sorry whatever it may be but i wouldn't say i'm necessarily part of anything right i didn't stick anybody up right um i didn't jack anyone i just happened to live in an area so in that way sent in that with having that kind of way of thinking imagine our views on life would be completely different wouldn't they if you got that person out from school who stabbed somebody in the street and went to prison for 22 years our way that we view the world is completely different even though we lived next door to each other our parents knew each other with the sort of stuff we broke bread we played football so um, yeah i'd never really got that but hey I'm, I'm glad he kind of put it succinctly and was able to kind of clarify his point there and then i think the last one is this one i want to quickly hear is um when we exit the office building i stop in my tracks i could swear that the lamborghini was once again facing the opposite direction and my trip and i say or was the car facing the other direction they were they turned it around west says and then climbing the driver's seat only then i realized that we have not been alone since we landed at the airport five hours ago two additional lamborghini Euruses are following us they've painted matte black so he has these i'm assuming they're his special forces security team that follows him around but that is the height of wealth in it that's what you want you want these two security officers in in nondescript car that look exactly the same as you following you around and stuff but yeah i thought that was pretty cool man but definitely check it out it's a really inspiring and if you really cool um some really cool insights about what he decides to do with his housing projects um the, the obviously the photography is amazing because it all took place at his wyoming ranch um again really well detailed i like the fact that he styled himself with all his own clothes for the most part stuff that you've seen him wear um, of course the sheep that he's going to use for some of the cool everything he's doing the fact that he uses season eight is about work is about um outfitting the work people who work in and around his what you call it compound whatever it may be called or service people in general 
So I thought that was amazing. Definitely check it out. It's available now on GQ and loads of cool shots of him. And again, this is a pl one of the plans for um, what's this again? So one of the renderings by Claudio Silverstein and Kanye West of a dome shaped home that will eventually be built at Westlake Branch, Westlake Ranch, sorry, a systemic detailing proposed layout. So yeah, schematic, sorry, scheme systemic schematic layout. But yeah, definitely cool interview. I recommend you check it out. Super interesting. Anyway, let's move on to that one. Let's go into some other topics here. Um, oh, resident advisor actually have detailed. There's some news about what was it called? Some news about events and nightlife stuff, which I thought was of interest here. So, resident advisor doing a good job of kind of doing these coronavirus updates in terms of what's happening and how it's going to affect um, the dance music industry. And they put some news here just I've seen today where it sort of essentially gives us a bit of a timeline, a bit of a roadmap as to when we can expect to go back to raving in our favourite places. Because I'm sure a few of you are itching and ready to go back and dance within a you know a dingy lit, a dimly lit warehouse somewhere um, with massive stack speakers blaring into your eardrums. So this is an update from the 15th uh, for your resident advisor, and it says. Um, earlier today, German Chancellor Angela Merkel extended a ban on all major events, concerts, festivals and football matches until August 31st. The country's federal system means um, each state will decide its own restrictions, including the size of the event. It's unclear whether this will affect nightclubs. So we've got some sort of idea when the end point is going to be, right? But the issue we have here is that it's August 31st that they're deciding is when they're going to extend it until right the lockdown. Right, the ban on all basically lockdown or the ban on all big events. So they'll we'll still have I think what will happen is that we'll have the lockdown will still continue until then. We might see people be phased back into work, right? People maybe kids will go back into school in different in different phases from like secondary probably from like primary to secondary to college kids and stuff. Then we might see different areas of industry go back into work. And then from there, we'll still see a lot of social distancing. I still think supermarkets and shops and shit will still have people queuing out, you know, two meters apart to make sure no one's um, within range of the virus if you're asymptomatic. And then I would assume once that is done, um, insurance companies will be willing to, you know, um, provide insurance for these events once there's some kind of idea of a vaccine maybe there's some stipulation from the state or the government that you can do events but i think until then you won't see events i think again until the next until next year until basically the summer of next year when the vaccine is available because i think most scientists that you 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 hear or you hear speaking say that usually vaccines take about a year to develop right um so once that happens i think insurance companies will be more willing to sort of um make sure they can cover events because no one wants to be viable now if they put an event on unless again i think if you if you know if you're all right going to like warehouse parties and stuff you'll be fine i don't think there'll be an issue you'll still find those kind of underground events where you sort of have to text a number or be a part of a facebook group be on an instagram page i think that'd be cool but if you want to go to an actual ticket event that you might see on ra i think you definitely should be thinking about that until next year unless you go to something in like you know central europe or eastern europe where they don't give a fucking fucking it like as soon as they get the green light they're going so if you booked one of those i think um london warehouse events has a festival in albania i think coming up in september or something i think that'll be fine maybe the that thing in vietnam was it called i forgot what that place is called the festival everyone goes to in vietnam that might be all right that's in december um, they might be okay and it's up to you if you want to go or not so I think a lot of the bigger ones might not again thinking about it too a lot of the bigger places might not take that chance because they're having to shell out a lot more money to set up the entire event hire security get a bar in book the people it's a lot to do so I assume if you're willing to go to the underground stuff that'll be on but again I wouldn't get your hopes up for anything happening in June or July across Europe I would say for the most part if if Germany's saying the 31st and they've been pretty good in terms of stemming the tide and flattening the curve then I can only assume we're going to see it especially in the UK or especially other places in Europe we're definitely going to see that um, restrictions lifted I would say 
by the end of the year and then large scale events hopefully by next year but then that also will give the option for football games and stuff to be played behind closed doors because they won't need to have people in the stadium but at nightclub events i think next year so that's the probably the sad news regarding that but hey what can you do we move on and then we say do, 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 do. what we want to talk about here ba, 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 ba. Oh, I thought this was interesting. So, <coughs> Joe Rogan mentioned in his podcast, I think, earlier on with Tim Dillon, that he thinks he's going to change the way that he does his touring, which I think, you know, a lot of people are going to do. They're going to make these changes once they realise, you know, life isn't going to go back to normal once the restriction gets lifted. And he's decided that he's probably going to do a few appearances and play a few regular spots. So, usually they have a regular spot at the comedy store the love factory or the ice house in la where they sort of always perform and then he might do this thing where he does residencies every summer in las vegas or somewhere big right a big place where you kind of book it out for six weeks um back-to-back dates and you have people kind of flying from all over the world to come and see you in one place um and i think that might be something to that might be that might essentially help the low the middle to lower tier people within different industries whether it's djs whether it's singers whether it's you know performers of any kind i think might be helped the fact that a lot of the higher you know the people at the top of their industry will probably look at it and think you know what i probably want to spend more time with my family off the back of this issue i don't want to be flying around the world 360 times i don't know 20 250 times at the in, in the year i want to be there for my family and my friends i want to make sure i see my kids grow up all that sort of nice smooth mushy stuff but like I said, I think it might present an opportunity for the people in the mid to lower level to have the opportunity to play more often and get seen more often in their major markets or in their local areas because you don't have the um, you don't have the weight or the you know you don't have the weight of the bigger acts coming in and sort of booking out dates and not taking dates away from you but not allowing you to play on those dates that you're playing because you know who wants to imagine Dave Chappelle comes and tours in your town the last thing you want to do is put on an event the same week isn't it? or the same day because no one's going to come to your thing unless you obviously don't mind being a bit scrappy and sort of like you know putting your wits against up, up against his marketing team but for the most part you want to give yourself the best possible chance to concede and the best way to do that is to make sure he's not within your purview so maybe that presents a good option and i was thinking for electronic music that could be also pretty cool where we might see uh a lot more bigger maybe the mid to the upper level djs um reducing their fees somewhat so they can play more often in the locations that are nearer to their home especially if they live in because most of the big guys they live in you know major cities right paris amsterdam berlin london i don't know whatever right um, there's not a lot of them that live in like rando places or if they do they can still commute quite easy to these, uh, these hotspot locations so they might play regularly in certain clubs and then um uh just smash out all the big festivals in the summer that pay them the most amount of money anyway right because at the moment a lot of these guys are flying to all the big clubs they're doing all the little clubs and they're doing all the big festivals which is you know pretty it's a pretty uh, brutal schedule or workload in it it's a lot to do um but it probably they're probably best served trying to do less charge a bit more and then they're able to stay at home longer but i don't know if it depends if they want to stay home some of them probably don't probably some probably want to go and tour so they can avoid their families i don't know but i thought that was a pretty cool um idea from joe in that respect i would like to see that because again i think would change the way uh bookers in clubs and bars book people a bit, like I said, I've been a really big proponent in terms of pushing the idea that we need more bars and clubs in the UK to um, adopt the residency program or idea, right? Where essentially you have the same five to ten people playing every weekend in your bar and club, and then maybe on special occasions or maybe sometimes even special occasions you keep them there and let them play. You might kind of sprinkle in the odd superstar DJ here and there, but you don't rely on the superstar DJ to kind of make sure that you guys are paying rent or you're able to pay your staff you rely on that through the people that are in your local community and why that helps is that obviously number one from a you know from a greedy point of view as a bar manager you can currently get away with paying those guys and girls less 
um, they'll be grateful for the opportunity. They'll be more willing to invite and bring their friends. They're gonna push and promote that thing, you know, until the cows go home because it's le- legit. It's a legitimate chance and opportunity for them. Imagine if E One had a group of like ten to fifteen people that they play that play regularly there. Apart from the big nights they put on, right, or in the other room, they've got residents that play all the time in in X O Y or upstairs. The residents playing there, and then they have the bigger person playing downstairs. Imagine how stoked that person will be the fact that they're sharing the same room or the same airspace as the bigger dude and being able to kind of you know um uncompromisingly play their kind of style of music with, in front of a captive audience instead of playing it in some random pub somewhere no one cares where you're at i think that'd be awesome um it'll change maybe the attitudes that clubbers have when they go out right they won't be that entitled or whatever maybe um they'll be more open to letting people discover their sounds and shit they'll recommend their friends i think there's a lot of scope for it going forward and again it'll put the It'll put the promoters or put the event uh, managers in these bars and clubs in the corner and make them choose the local talent because there's no other option, right? Especially with you know uh, Brexit, of course, happening and promoters are gonna have to work, they're gonna have to pay a fee for the person to come in. And you know, st- what I've, I've got the clearance, they gotta pay a particular fee to get someone in from an EU country to come into the UK to play. So, all these are all these things economically are going to eat into their profits or their ability to break even. And you know, from the time that I've been promoting, I know from my experience, you don't really want to make money because you know you won't. You just want to break break even and make sure that you put on a good party for your friends in it. You want to have a, you want to have a good memory. You want to when you reconnect with your boy um, on the, the, the following weekend, you want to be able to share some fun moments in it. So if you're able to do that, people that you know and love in your local community, that's probably the best way to go about it, I think. But what do I know? Let's move on. Um, no more groupies oh and I think this might actually lead I think I saw this video of uh, Luciano and uh, Carl Craig playing at I'm not even sure what event this is Uh, this is a uh, Cadenza uh, pool party I'm just looking at it thinking this could probably be the end of this sort of kind of thing isn't it of seeing people play at a festival with this amount of groupies behind them in the stage and you know it's a quintessential sort of like you know mediterranean party where you have tours of scantily clad women behind the dj booth loads of groupies loads of just you know hangers on trying to um uh, i don't know be front and center of these performances it's always weird i always thought right like this idea that you kind of want to dance behind the dj and make it well known that you're part of the crew you start looking at the people in the crowd and pointing and putting your hands in the air as if like you're doing something it's just a bizarre way to do things i never really been that kind of guy but and it's so bad in the video that car Gray can't even move right he can't exactly he can't do his job properly because there's so many people on the stage but they like that i think luciano now has changed i think i remember hearing of watching a video of him talking in an interview for i think an ims uh, ib for something and he was uh he seemed a little bit more clear-minded he's think he's sober now he goes to therapy and you know whatever it may be but jesus christ man thank you for on stage What, what, what does that look like with social distancing? What does that look like? Do you have to have them spaced out? Is just is it just go for bid just the people performing on the stage that are gonna be up on there? I don't know. to see the lack of smartphones i think you know that era was maybe digital cameras looks like everyone's got like a cyber shot looks like from the likes of it yeah cyber shot there cyber shot here so you know those are those are dedicated cameras that will maybe what 300 pounds plus which is probably a lot out of people's price range and you have to really give a shit about photography to get one of those so you did see a complete lack of uh, smartphones in this crowd which is quite um refreshing but yeah, I wonder what that's going to look like nowadays, right? We're going to see that many people be in a booth. 
Will they want to be there? Will they be comfortable having them there? Or will we see like a, or will, or will performances be like an actual performance that you go to like in a festival where a band plays, right? Uh, and then when they finish, they pack up and then someone else comes and plays after. But there's no like just loitering. The other band just hang around behind them or whilst they have, you know, the cooks aren't just going to be standing behind the strokes as they're playing, right? They, they go home or they go to the green room and then the other one comes and then they kind of rotate. That could be pretty cool. I, I wouldn't be against seeing that, to be honest. <laughs> move on what else we want to talk about here bu, 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 bu. oh instagram live of, oh instagram instagram have finally launched the desktop version of live so you can watch that via your desktop wherever you may be so i thought that was pretty cool it's news here from engadget it says instagram live streams are now available or now viewable on the web which might be in part due to the whole quarantine radio stuff that Tory Lanez has been doing and the versus battles that Swiss Beast has been putting on. There's been a lot of, I think, th- from what I follow into, there's an account called Pop Grave on Instagram that is essentially the pop version of the Shade Room. And they post loads of stuff, you know, considering uh, about the mainstream pop industry. And there's been a few people doing some live streams. I saw Miley Cyrus talking to Selena Gomez, and there's been some stuff happening, but it seems like most of the energy has, th- has come from the hip hop community, right? Whether it's girls twerking, whether it's beat battles, whether it's just interviews with Joe Budden talking to random people that he knows, all the kind of energy and the innovation has come from the hip hop world, and it's nice to see Instagram iterating or kind of um, making the necessary adjustments and updates on the app to make sure they kind of uh, profit and capitalize on what's going on on those platforms. Obviously, I'm sure this product was probably in the roadmap for a while, and they probably just you know bumped up in terms of priority in terms of what's going on in terms of lockdown take advantage of it but it's cool to see them doing it so quickly because i always got the impression that they were trying to push people towards um making sure they use the app right because i think nowadays if you don't have an instagram and you try and browse someone's account it will let you browse up until maybe four or three rows and then once you try and click more it'll make you try and sign into an account so they want to make sure people that are viewing um, Instagram profiles have actually got a profile registered on there, registered on there, likelihood of them getting more ad dollars, blah blah blah. So they seem that like they're always trying to push people to go to the app. But it looks like now because they're they're aware that a lot of people using it are engaged and I'm sure the daily um engagement rate has gone up quite off quite uh, considerably during the whole lockdown. It makes sense to um essentially allow this feature that was predominantly a mobile thing which you couldn't necessarily watch unless you had the app on your ipad it's called saying so you do it on the desktop browser so this is from engagement it says the following it says um now that you're likely staying at home during a covid19 pandemic you might not be inclined to watch live instagram feeds on your phone um now you don't have to um users including engadget have noticed that instagram live streams recently became viewable on web the experience is familiar and supports two-person streams but takes advantage of the extra widescreen space to keep comments separate from the video oh it's awesome so you see it from the side i'm assuming you won't have to deal with half a feed being obscured by text we've asked instagram if it can share more details on this rollout you can't start a broadcast from a desktop so this isn't a complete alternative okay to have web friendly live streaming services it does fill a considerable gap in instagram's web version mind you so you can watch but you can't start one you should come in handy for musicians celebrities and others who want to reach out to fans while they're stuck at home so you can watch it but you can't start one which is all right isn't it because i think for the most part most people i would assume numbers wise there's probably more people viewing these things as they are people actually taking part in doing them right i would assume because to do it well at a high level does require a little bit of clout does require a little bit of nous. you have to have something to bring in. people are willing to kind of tap into and click and watch you doing so yeah that's pretty cool so definitely check that out on the web browser if you're that way inclined next on the news list what do we have here we have do it yourself burgers from patty and bun if you're feeling a bit peckish i've been um 
what have I done lately? I think during the lockdown, what have I ordered? I think I've ordered Domino's and I've ordered a kebab from the best kebab place that we have around the corner. But that's about it. I think since McDonald's closed its doors, that's been a bit of a bummer. So ordering out has been a little bit um, problematic um, in the terms of I don't really know what to order or don't really know what to get. And, you know, usually McDonald's sort of served the purpose in terms of just providing you with the burger alternative at a low price. And if you wanted something a little bit more bougie, you could always scale up and get, you know, a Shake Shack or whatever it may be. That was usually the option. But now that's gone, you'll have to go all the way up or you have to get some scummy kind of roadman, you know, hood sort of chicken burger sort of shit, which no one wants to do at this at this current time, especially most of them aren't even open. But I like this idea. Um, this is from Hot Dinners. And it says here, Patty and Bun are test driving a uh, DIY burger kit. So if you're familiar with Patty and Bun, they're essentially, you know, your quintessential standard uh, metropolitan a burger place where they do really good burgers, great buns, great meat. Um, I'm assuming ground, ground, what's that? Ground fed beef and all that sort of good stuff. Homemade sauce, great cheese, just standard burger, but with all the really high quality ingredients that you expect from a nice place. And now they're deciding to deconstruct it and provide it for you in a pack, so you can kind of make it at home yourself, which. I'm sure for some people isn't the lick because I saw some people order or go to these places because they don't want to cook and there's a lot of people out here complaining online saying oh man this thing at home thing is dead because you're having to like make shit you're having to be a bit more scrappy and you know essentially start learning how to cook if you don't but I like this idea I think again it could it could be a good option for people in the future too I could see them still having this option available on the menu uh, for people who kind of want to make it on their own or who want to maybe just deconstruct the burger itself or just want the patty to make it with other stuff this could still be an option um because the end of the day if the if it doesn't matter if they're selling you the meat directly if hawks more sell you the meat that they um that they get from their own farm it doesn't necessarily negate the uh the allure of hawks more you still want to go there eventually right it's just that they're providing an option for people who can't go to a restaurant or maybe not willing to to still eat the meat once they eat it they have that kind of feeling of like oh, i want to go then check it out myself and i give them a restaurant have them cook it for me so it, it works hand in hand but this is from a uh, test um, hot dinner sorry it says the following it says what's the diy burger kit so soon after the lockdown started patent bun among best burger purveyors in london closed down the refrigeration but soon after they worked out a way to make sure that everyone in london could still get their burger bun um they've teamed up with butchers hd water who provides the meat for their burgers to deliver everything you need to create two patent buns uh most popular burgers at home frankly we love the idea he says so what will i be able to make he says the two key pain bun burgers you'll be able to make at home are the ari gold cheeseburger and the smoky robinson bacon burger you can buy the box that comes concert that comes you can buy a box that just concentrates on one type or get a mix of both you'll have enough in the box to make four in total that is fucking awesome so what comes in the box we've laid it out here below so essentially depending on what you get you get the patty so two patties you get the um, condiments i'm assuming here the mix the sauce the cheese the pickles i'm assuming the bit of bacon and the great buns that they have in the store because i think for the most something that separates it usually is the bread and the, and the meat i think the sauces and whatever they maybe you can get away with having shit sauce terrible garnishes and maybe budget cheese but if you don't have the great meat and you don't have the burger bun that's really where it kind of um, goes downheel it's getting me hungry actually thinking about it, it says here um and it says uh is that all we need to create the burger it says not quite you also need a tomato some lettuce ideally baby gem and tomato sauce if you're missing the first two it's not the end of the world you'll still be able to pull it together um to start with we suggest that you have everything laid out and ready before you cook the burger here's what goes into each version so they've got a picture here of all the components that go into the burger you've got the lettuce got the sauerkraut i don't know what that is you got the tomato the bun the sauce the cheese and the patty same with the bacon version and then yeah you just make it at home yourself basically i think it's a pretty cool idea i'm all for it again I, it won't work for some people i think some people are really hell-bent on making sure you know on keeping the sort of restaurant experience of these places for the restaurant and not having them take some people don't even order take away from these places because i think a lot of these places the food doesn't travel that well um, that happened to us when we ordered from a Shake Shack. It was, you know, when it once it arrived, it was like, you know, it looked like it was involved in a high speed uh, police chase or something. So I'm assuming some people don't like that, but I quite like the idea of having the 
everything kind of deconstructed so you can make it home. I think it works out pretty well, especially for stuff like burgers. I think that is easy to do. Maybe with the pizzas and stuff, that might be a bit difficult. What are they going to do? Send you the bun or the topping? I don't know. Send you, sorry, the dough um, via an Uber Eats delivery driver. I'm not too sure, but I quite like that. I think a lot of people are doing it as well. There's one I saw for dessert too that they're doing the same sort of thing. I think it's this one, right? Good egg. I'm now doing the bake your own uh, bababka kit, which is pretty cool. If you find out bababka, it's one of my favorite cakes. So you get the whole, you know, everything's kind of deconstructed there too. You get the strong flour, the yeast, the butter, the tahini, the little chocolate chips, and of course an egg. And you just make that yourself at home as well. So loads of cool options that these brands are doing, putting together in terms of making sure people are able to eat their favorite thing at home during this lockdown. But yeah, especially you've got the time in it. You've got well, nothing but time at the moment. So I think it's a great option going forward. Anyway, that is Exxon Zing Show episode number 302. Thanks again for tuning in as per usual. If you want to learn more about myself, please check out my website, exonzinger.com for more information. Um, links to my blog, links to my mixes. Um, you can contact me on there as well or via email, all that stuff. If you're watching via the YouTube, of course, smash that like button, hit subscribe, leave me a comment. If you're listening via the podcast app, leave me a five-star review. And of course, share the show with your family and friends. But until then, see each other. See you guys very, very soon. If Dialect actually comes out on Friday, I'm going to probably do a live stream maybe on Twitch, I'll share that later on here for those of you that are interested and do a little live stream, we can kind of listen to it together, but until then, take care, be safe, see you guys very, very soon.